Rob, there we go. Um, so I will do introduction first. Maybe you can put on the latest news and I will make a start. I will introduce uh, Elevated Brands. I will introduce you and I will also introduce Matthew. Um, after that, um, you can start sharing and I will also tell all our sellers to ask any questions if they have. Thank you. Right. 那我们现在活动就准备开始了我想先问一下大家可不可以听得到我们的声音然后同时呢也问一下大家现在能不能够看得到屏幕上的PPT可以看到好的好谢谢应该来说跟大家好久没有见面因为疫情原因我一直都在
。那在这个地方呢，我们想，呃，这边是 Rob 再去跟到大家去做自我介绍。那呃 ，Rob 呢，他自己是呃澳大利亚人，呃，在呃这边呢 ，Matthew Bosa 呢，他呃嗯、呃，今天也会来去跟大家去进行后面的分享。那呃 ，Matthew 呢，呃，以前是在呃德勤里边来去工作，那么。呃，现在呢是 Elevate Brand 的这个亚马逊的并购啊、呃、董事，那他是南非人，但是现在两个，但南非人不不，只是这个很多是是白色的啊。那在这边呢，我们也呃今天跟到大家去说一下呢，现在整个 Elevate Brand 是在美国，所以说呃他们今天是在美国来去跟到大家去做直播。呃 ，OK， Rob， you can go on。Hi, Rob, you're on mute. I'm Steen,、um, and we started doing retail arbitrage,、um, and then we moved into private label, and we launched、uh, two brands. But we are we also started acquiring brands. Okay. And what we realized is、um, we could scale quicker acquiring businesses、uh, versus launching them. 呃、uh, ，OK， 嗯、um, ，那么呃， uh, 现在呢，呃、uh, ，Rob 他们整个 a l e v a t e Brands 以前就是呃、um, 卖家，那么他们从零起步，那么在亚马逊上打造了两个非常呃、uh, 知名的品牌，那么现在呢，他们是变成了亚马逊品牌的收购并购人，所以说呃，这是他们现在呃会跟大家去分享他们自己的经历 ，Rob。And and what we here to speak to you today is to、um, try give you some perspectives on、um, the fact that Amazon accounts are now extremely valuable, and there now is a big universe of potential buyers、um, who are acquiring Amazon FBA businesses, including Elevate Brands. No. And. <clears throat> OK， 你个你个杨毅。OK， 那呃，现在呢，呃 ，Rob 希望跟到大家去分享的呢，就是希望让我们所有中国的卖家，特别是我们的会员，能够知道，就是你手上现在的亚马逊品牌非常的呃具有价值，而且呢，你会发现越来越多的呃这个人开始来去向大家来去呃购买大家手上的品牌 ，Rob。So one thing to realize is not only can you make money from operating an Amazon account, but you can also make a lot more money from selling it to someone like Elevate Brands. 那现在呢，他也希望跟到大家去说的呢，就是呃，你可以从亚马逊销售中间来去挣钱，但是也希望大家能够清楚，你同样可以从呃呃打造一个品牌，然后把这个品牌卖掉，赚更多的钱。So, so this is the agenda for today's presentation. We wanted to talk about the five steps、um, to achieving、uh, an exit of an Amazon FBA business, and then also just talk a little bit about Elevate Brands. So the five steps are one, getting ready; two, timing; three, exit options; four, deal process; and five,、uh, deal closing. 那么，呃，今天，呃 ，Rob 这边呢会跟大家去分享到，就是，呃，怎么样能够让自己的品牌，啊、呃，这个能够能够更具有价值，然后同时被成功的来去，呃，呃，卖掉。那么现在呢，他会总共来去跟大家去分五个步骤来去说。第一个呢，就是你前期需要做好的准备。那么这对于我们的会员来去说呢，很重要，就是大家要知道。那么现在国内的整个的税务也会抓得很严。那么，呃，我们在现在越来越多的会员在去问到我们怎么样在跨境电商做账报税的问题。但是大家要清楚，就是你在做账报税的时候，你也需要能够知道你的产、你的品牌从这个时候，呃，或者在你的过去十二个月开始，其实就已经具备价值了。所以说你需要准备好什么，这是第一步。第二一步呢，就是整个的这个时间会需要多久？那么第三一个呢，就是你怎么样可可以，呃，打造了一个品牌之后，成功的从这个品牌中间退出出来。那么第四一个呢，就是整个成交的这样的一个步骤是什么？那么第五一个呢，就是啊、嗯，那么啊、嗯，在这个品牌成交了之后，你怎么样可以收到付款 ？Rob， 
Yep. So next slide, Matt. Um, so, so firstly, um, it, it's all, you know, the day you start an Amazon business is the day you should start getting ready, uh, for an exit. And the acronym we use in English is GOAT. Um, I'm not sure what that means in Chinese, but it's GOAT. So it's about growth, operations, accounting, and trenches. 呃、um, ，那么呃，现在呢，呃 ，Rob 再呃再去说到呢，就是大家要知道，就是你从亚马逊上建立品牌的第一天，那么你就应该知道你的品牌已经具备价值了。那么今天呢，他会用 GOAT 这样的一个啊、呃、一个一个原理来去跟到大家去说，你应该怎么样去做。首先，第一个是怎么样能够让大家的品牌能够成长。那么第二一个呢，就是怎么样能够呃经营你的品牌。那么第三一个呢，就是。怎么样能够让这个品牌在呃财务上面能够更加的啊、呃、正规化？那么第四一个呢，就是你怎么样呃需要来去保护你这个品牌？那说到的就是 trench， 那么 trench 包括的就是啊、呃、商标以及说是知识产权的注册。Rob， so so the first thing is um start optimizing and building your growth narrative. Um, so this is、uh, developing a growth plan, which you can communicate clearly to a new buyer. So that might be new SKUs,、um, new markets,、um, and off Amazon growth levers. 那么第一个呢，就是啊、呃，成长，就是这个品牌怎么样去成长。那呃 ，Rob 这边点出来的是几个。首先，第一个就是你的 SKU， 也就是说你的产品。那么这个产品怎么样能够让产品线成长？那么第二一个呢，就是新的市场。那大家怎么样能够啊、呃、开拓更多新的市场？那第三一个呢，就是亚马逊的站外的啊、呃、这个呃推广以及说是促销的方式。Rob。Um, then we have operations, and this is all about getting your house in order. So imagine you are trying to sell your house; you want it to be nice and clean. That applies to an Amazon business. So our recommendation is keep things as simple as possible.、Um, so try keep all the SKUs in your Amazon account in a single category.、Um, try establish clear SOP so a new buyer can understand how to manage the account.、Um, Also, we would recommend do not have five separate seller central accounts running the one Amazon store.、Um, we know that is very common in China, but for a Western buyer in the U.S., that 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 looks suspicious. So try try run everything from a single seller central account attached to one Amazon storefront. 那么呃，第二一点呢，就是在于运营这一块。那么从运营这上面来去说呢，呃，呃 ，Rob 刚才强调的一个词很重要，就是 simple， 就是要简单，也就是说清晰明了。那在这个地方，呃，他需要跟到大家去说的几个，那就是，呃，首先提出刚刚他提出来的几点，就是你的 SKU 需要沉淀在一个类目里边，也就是说你不要呃呃想的。过多的做一个杂货店或者跳类目的来去发展，那么第二一个呢，就是你需要呃有相关的这样的一个啊、嗯、这个啊、嗯、ERP 或者说是相关的软件，无论大家用什么，你们需要能够把每一笔交易或者说是啊、呃、每一个这个成交，那么能够清晰的记录下来。那么第三一个呢，就是嗯、呃、大家呃他知道，就是很多的我们中国卖家呢，会让一个贝亚的品牌在多个店铺里边呃来去。同时推这个品牌，但是呢，呃，这对于整个的这个呃投资方来去说呢，这是会有问题的，因为首先第一个这是违反亚马逊的相关的一些可能呃多账户操作的规定，那么与此同时呢，呃，也有可能会让你这个品牌变得更加的复杂。Rob，、um, next is、uh, keep your、uh, financial accounts as clean as possible.、Um, So if you have messy financials, it will result in a lower price on the exit. So try appoint a professional accountant or use a a U.S. based bookkeeping service,、um, and also keep your bank accounts clean. So have one bank account for each Amazon account, and don't run your personal expenses through that bank account. 那呃，再一个呢，就是关于财务这一块
那么呃，刚刚说到的就是，其实财务这一块，我相信大家现在已经啊、呃、非常非常重视了。那么呃，在这边在重视的时候呢 ，Rob 刚才给出来的建议呢，就是呃，大家呃最好呢就是呃，财务在这边呢需要能够有啊、呃、比较专业的这个嗯、呃、会计来去为大家去做。那这个会计可以是你自己公司的，也可以是呃其他的，反正大家需要找一个相关的比较专业的会计，能够把账目能够清晰明了。那还有一点呢，就是呃，在呃这个收账这一块儿，那当然 ，Rob 作为美国这这一边的啊呃,呃投资人呢，他更多的是希望看到的是呃这个账账户的款项是从呃是收到了美国账里边去的。但在这边呢，其实我在这之前也跟 Rob 说过，就是在中国这边往往是通过啊呃,呃第三方的一些收款的方式来去收的。所以说这一点呢，呃，会对于中国这边呢，我们会有啊、呃、其他的一些这个呃。这个不同的一些地方 ，OK, Rob. Um, the the final point is, um, you know, protect your intellectual property. So obviously, a buyer like ours is is very interested in 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 a brand、um, that has trademarks,、um, that has patents, and that has Amazon brand registry. So if if you do not have those.、Um, You you might not be able to sell the account. So very important if you are growing your business to make sure that your intellectual property is protected in China, in the U.S., in Europe, and then make sure you have brand registry. Very very important. 那呃呃，第四一个问题呢，就是刚刚我们说到的知识产权保护的问题。那从知识产权保护的问题上面来去说呢，呃 ，Rob 是从三个层面跟到大家去讲的。那第一个呢，就是你的商标。那当然，你的商标是最好能够在亚马逊所在的市场都能够去注册。那第二一个呢，就是专利。其实专利最近呢、呃，很多的会员也都会跟我发微信问到我，因为亚马逊现在对于专利的这个呃查处会更加的严格。但是这里有呢，我我在 Rob 的这个基础上稍微呃这个发散一点，跟到大家去说，就是呃大家要知道现在的整个的专利，其实一旦你注册了之后，很有可能你会让让你在这个产品里边会有非常强的一个优势。那么这边呢有一点我可以跟到大家去讲的，就是如果要是说我们现在在美国对于任何的啊、呃、产品。备案了专利之后，我们对于任何的卖家进行起诉。那么在这种情况下面，基本上我们可以造成大量的卖家的这个呃品牌或者店铺下架。原因是什么呢？就是因为所有的这些中国的卖家基本上是不可能到美国这边来去打官司的。所以说，你的专利的在美国的备案可以非常有强的优势，能够保障你在你所在的品类里边有有长远的一个发展。那么呃，第三一点，从第三个层面上面 ，Rob 来去跟。让大家去说的就是呃品牌保护。那从品牌保护上面来去说，呃呃这品牌备案。那么从品牌备案上面来去说，其实大家都已经已经是非常呃清晰了。所以说这一点我不用太多的在这里跟到大家去介绍。反正你的亚马逊的呃店铺里边的商标记得备案就可以了。Rob， thank you. I'm going to pass to Matt now to talk about uh timing and deal structures. Okay. 好，那现在呢，就是由呃 Matthew 来去跟到大家去呃做下一段的分享 ，Matt。So finding the right time to sell your Amazon business is very important. People, companies are willing to pay more for a business that had hidden in the right trajectory, but as soon as they see some of the warning signs where the business is going down, the valuation start decreasing significantly. So it's imperative to find the right time to sell. 那呃，刚刚 Matthew 跟到大家去说的呢，就是大家要知道，就是这这我呃我会呃把这个 Matthew 和 Matt 这边的啊、呃、分享呢，我会加上我们自己在中国卖家这边经验跟到大家去说明。那 Matthew 这边说到呢，就是大家要清楚，你做亚马逊，你不可能保证你的呃产品一直都是 best seller， 你的产品一直都是销售额往上涨的，总有竞争对手会要啊、呃、看到你的产品，然后希望能够把你的产品竞争。下去，那么大家再去啊呃,呃，在这种情况下面，你自己经营一个品牌会非常非常的辛苦。但是在这种时候，你也要知道你什么时候可以是一个比较好的呃销售品牌的机会。那么这个机会呢 ，Matthew 说到呢，就是你要记住，是你的呃整个的呃这个销量是在往上涨的时候，那么你就应该是可以来去把握这样的机会了 ，Matt。
So when we value a business, the business will be valued on the last 12 months trade in history. So you want to make sure that you've got good uh, track record in the previous financial year. So for example, if you're looking at the business now in March, we're going to be looking at the results that the business made last year in March, April, May. So if you know that the results are bad for the first three months in the last 12 month cycle, it's sometimes better to try to wait a month or two to sell when the full 12 month period is looking a lot better. Um, 那 Matthew 刚刚说的呢，就是呃，现在作为亚马逊的品牌收购啊、呃，投资人或者收购人呢，他们往往这边是美国的习惯，会看你过去十二个月的销售记录，他们不会看很长的时间，所以说这对于大家来去说是一个好的事情。但是大家也要清楚，就是呃，你如果要说想让你的整个的这个销售数据和表现更好看的话呢，那么大家建建议大家更多的是需要能够在啊、呃，这个你呃不要。要在呃第一个季度来去呃找到相关的这样的一些啊、呃、投资人，就最主要的原因是因为你第一个季度你会发现的是跟你的前面第四季度比起来，你的销量是下降的。所以在这个地方呢，最好大家是可以在第三到第四个季度开始来去找到更多的投资人。Matt，、uh, so businesses that are growing, we are willing to pay a lot more if the business has is showing a growing trajectory. If it looks like it's going upwards, we're going to pay a lot more. But as soon as the business starts trending downwards, the valuation is going to decrease significantly. Um, sorry, Rob, could you say it again? <laughs> yeah. So businesses that are growing, we're going to pay a lot more if the trajectory of the business is going exponentially up.、Uh-huh. But as soon as the sales start declining, the valuation is going to decrease significantly. Right. 那 Matthew 这边说呢，就是大家要知道你的价值。那如果要说大家现在的销售额是在往上涨的时候呢，那呃，这个投资人会对于大家的整个的这个品牌的估值会高很多。所以说，即使是你同样一个公司在同一个财政年度的话，那么呃，记得就是呃，最好是把。这个呃呃上涨的这个阶段，然后把握好，找到投资人，你的品牌估值会更高。Matt， yeah， some of the main reasons that we see people wanting to sell their business is because it starts becoming a lot more difficult. Amazon businesses can be very complex, and the more you grow, the more challenging it becomes. It becomes a lot more complicated to continue to manage supply chain, and what happens is. <laughs> As soon as you start running, if you miss one order, if you miss one order into Amazon, your sales ranking is going to start decreasing exponentially. Okay. 那呃 ，Matthew 刚刚说到呢，其实就是前面我跟大家去提到的问题，就是大家要知道的，就是呃，当你呃，就是他们现在收购了很多的一些品牌，那么与此同时呢，也有非常非常多的一些卖家在跟他们来去接触。那他们可以看到，就是所有这些卖家为什么要去卖这些品牌，很重要的原因就是发现这些卖家在亚马这些卖家发现，在亚马逊上运营会变得越来越困难，那么嗯、呃，竞争会变得越来越激烈。Matt. Yeah, two other reasons we see people exit their business is when their niche starts becoming more competitive, and also if they get concerned about the single channel risk of Amazon. If you sell in only on Amazon and Amazon were to block your listing, suddenly you lose your entire revenue stream. 那呃，这一点呢，也是应该来说说到我们每一个啊、呃、卖家的心坎里边去了。那呃，麦叔这边说到的呢，就是另外一个，他们发现这么多的一些啊、呃，这个他们接触这么多的一些卖家，他们遇到的另外一个问题，就是他们所在的这个利基市场，也就是说是机会市场。呃，那么呃，就算是他的产品现在有优势，但是他的优势在亚马逊上会不断的减弱。那呃呃，与此同时呢，那他们也会发现就是。整个在亚马逊上的运营会变得越来越困难。Matt. Hey, Pepe. The next point that we're going to touch on is、um, the COVID impact. So, as I'm sure everyone is aware, you know, COVID has had you know different impacts on all the Amazon businesses. The one trend that we did see is e-commerce as a whole across the world has increased exponentially during the pandemic. As people can't go to the shops and they have to move to buying online, but at the same time, we've seen some businesses disappear completely. 
for example, we looked at two, we looked at two companies, the one which sold um, gym towels. So suddenly during COVID, people weren't going to the gym. So yoga towels and gym towels lost value. 那呃 ，Matt 这边说到了另外一呃，就是呃一个应该是说是机会也是挑战哈。那就是呃，现在其实为什么会突然一下有这么多的一些投资人咳咳开始来去看亚马逊的品牌？很重要的原因就是因为二零二零年的这一次疫情。那么呃，大家都知道疫情这一次造成了很多的这个呃传统零售啊、呃、遇到困难，但是在亚马逊或者呃电商的销量上面或呃还是。在一路的提升，那么销量在一路的提升。那在这边呢，呃，所以说现在会有越来越多的传统投零售店铺的这样一些呃投资人，现在会转投亚马逊的品牌。呃，那啊、呃、还有一点呢，就是他也可以看到，就是他们接触的卖家中间，其实也不一定是所有的卖家都会是销量往上涨的。他刚刚给出来的一个例子呢，就是呃，在卖这个健身房的，呃呃，汗巾的这这这一个卖家，那么他。他就遇到了比较大的问题，因为在啊、嗯、疫情期间，大家去健身房，就是消费者去健身房的机会基本上是呃猛降，所以说造成他的产品在亚马逊上的整个的销量也是猛降。那这边刚刚呢，我我还有一点可能呃漏掉跟大家去翻译了哈。那么呃这边 Matthew 刚才说到了呃呃这个卖家还有遇到的，就是为什么要去把品牌来去啊、呃、卖掉了很重要的一个原因，就是因为他们会发现他们不希望让让亚马逊变成他们唯一的销售渠道，所以说这也是为什么这么多卖家和投资人现在这么活跃的原因。OK， Matt。The other side, we've seen some businesses gain a lot of traction during COVID. For example, bread products have increased a lot during COVID as more people at home baking, so their prices shot up for six months and they subsequently dropped. Uh, you mean they dropped? They dropped recently. Yeah, they dropped. I mean, the sales have decreased in the past, you know, three months. I mean,、okay. people have stopped. Right.、And、they just had a temporary increase during COVID. Right. Okay. 那么呃，另外一个呃 m a t t h e w 给了大家的案例呢，就是呃，有一些呃，他发现有一些产品呢，呃，那么有的这个问题呢，就是呃，比如说他刚刚说到的，就是在于烘焙类的产品。那么烘焙类的产品在整个的去年在，在、呃、啊亚马逊的市场卖的非常的好。那么主要的原因，就是因为呃，很多人那么都在家工作，所以说呢，呃、大家都知道烘焙技巧呃猛增。那么，所以说造成烘焙产品的销量猛涨。但是呢，从观察今年第一个季度的时候，他会看到的是，因为现在整个的这个疫情在啊、呃、迅速的呃这个呃化解掉。那么，所以说呢，嗯、呃，突然一下这个烘烘焙类的产品的销量却呃一下子又降到了谷底。所以说，这是他给出来的另外的一个呃呃案例。Matt。Yeah, but overall, we think COVID has had a positive impact for Amazon sellers, as it's driven a lot. It's accelerated the process of driving a lot more customers from buying from brick and mortar stores to buying online. So we see the net impact has been very strong for Amazon sellers. The one thing that does make it difficult when we look at buying an Amazon business is we need to identify which one of the three categories does the Amazon seller fit into. Were they negatively affected by COVID? Were they over positively affected by COVID? Or are their earnings trending at the current run rate? Okay, that's very good point. 那现在呃 ，Matthew 说到的呢，就是嗯呃,呃，其实整体来去说呢，就是整个的疫情对于亚马逊的整呃卖家来去说是呃非常有帮助的。但是呢，他们作为投资人，他们会去看到的，就是呃三类不同的产品品类。那么呃，第一个品类呢，就是嗯、呃，像刚才说到了这个呃汗巾的这个品类，那么它很有可能是因为疫情，所以说受到了比较大的打击。那么这往下。走了。那么第二一个品类呢，是刚才说到的这个啊、呃、烘焙类的品类。那么因为疫情快速的上涨，但是随着疫情的快速的过去，它又在猛呃猛然的下降。所以说，作为他们作为投资方来去说，更希望看到的是，是不是有更多的品类抓住了整个的这个嗯。呃呃、疫情的这样的一个机会，能够会有一个长久的长远的发展。Matt。
in the last 12 months, an interesting thing has happened in the industry. The industry as a whole, over 50 new companies have been formed that are designed as aggregators. And what they are doing is they have raised over a billion dollars to go and buy Amazon brands. 那嗯，现在 Matthew 啊、呃，可以看到的呢，就是呃，也给到大家一个例子，就是现在的亚马逊的品牌呃，并购有多火，也就是大家遇到的，就是第一个是你现在的品牌价值在快速增长，第二一个就是你要看到的是你的竞争很有可能版图会发生变化。那刚刚提到的 Matthew 提到的就是呃，在看到他看到的就是过去。嗯、um, ，一年的时间里边，至少有五十家公司成立。那么他主要说到的是美国。那么整个的啊呃、嗯、专专注在亚马逊啊品牌收购的，全部都是专注在亚马逊品牌收购。那么在专注在亚马逊品牌收购的这五十家公司里边，整个的啊、嗯、这个呃现在准备去收并购品牌的金额已经超过了十亿美金。Matt， so what this has done is it's increased the competition. Because there's so many people with a lot of dry powder to deploy, that they end up the bidding process becomes very competitive. Often, when someone wants to sell their business, there's more than one company that's willing to put an offer in, and this is driving the price that the companies have to pay for Amazon businesses, because many of the companies are desperate to deploy the money. Okay, now, um. 呃，现在呢也给到了卖家的一个优势，那就是，呃，可能大家在中国这边还感觉不到很明显啊，但是，呃，确实我在呃北美这边会感觉到很明显，就是接触到这些的一些卖家，那么现在都会发现自己的品牌啊、呃、价值突然一下暴增，而且呢，呃，往往会有多个投资人呃争着去投一个品牌，这会让整个这些卖家的优势会显得更加的突出。Matt。So, because of the increased results in the past twelve months due to COVID, and because of all the money that's been raised in the market, this has significantly increased the price that people are willing to pay for Amazon businesses. And we've seen in the past three to four months, the value of Amazon businesses has increased exponentially, where companies are willing to pay twice what they were willing to pay before. And we think that this is the golden year for Amazon exits. 嗯、呃，那现在呢？其实，呃，正因为是啊、呃，疫情造成了啊、呃，亚马逊的整个的这个呃订单暴增。那么，呃，与此同时呢，也是因为有这么呃多的一些热钱在啊、呃、市场里边愿意去收购品牌。所以说，呃 ，Matthew 这边发现的就是跟一年之前相比，那么现在呃，往往收购一个品牌，很有可能会几家公司竞争，同时最终收购这个品牌的价值很有可能会。比呃去年的价值会增加一倍多，所以说，嗯，这是现在整个的一个啊、um, 这个趋势。Matt， um, so when selling your business, there's two different ways that you can do it. You can either sell it directly to a broker, or you can sell it directly to an an Amazon aggregator like ourselves. 那呃、嗯，现在呢，呃，就是从整个的品牌的啊。呃嗯、um, ，这个出售上面来去说，大家应该是可以看到两种类型的啊、呃、投资方。那第一种类型投资方呢是叫做 broker 中间人。那么呃，另外一种类型的投资方呢是直接投资方，那就是嗯、呃、他刚刚说的 aggregator。那么呃 ，elevated brands 就是 alleg 呃 aggregator， 那就是直接的投资方。Matt， so when selling to a broker, there's a few differences to keep in mind. Selling to a broker is going to take a lot longer. They want to take 30 to 60 days to look at the business before they release it for sale. They want to make sure that there's detailed financial accounts in place. They want to make sure that there's what they're going to do is they're going to hold an auction basically between different parties. So you then need to talk to 10 to 20 different companies in the space of one to two weeks, and this becomes a very intense process. The broker will help you during the process to make a decision. And advise you on each of the offers, but for this, they're going to charge almost a ten percent commission. It's going to come out of your selling price. 呃，那呃，如果要说是由中间人这边来去，嗯。
并购品牌或者收购品牌的话，那么他们一般的成交时间是在三十到六十天的时间。那么，呃，在这三十到六十天的时间里边，他们会需要去看到的就是你的财务报告。同时呢，呃，你会有很多的一些这个沟通工作要去做，因为往往一个中间人，他代表不仅仅是呃一一个投资方，而是会代表若干很多的投资方。所以说，呃，你会不断的。跟更多的这些投资方来去接触，那么与此同时呢，呃，这些中间人呢，他们也会从整个的这个成交中间会拿到呃百分之十以上的这样的一个呃一个佣金。Matt， when they sell directly to an aggregator like ourselves, the process can be a lot more simple and straightforward. We can decide within two to five days if we're interested in the business. Or if we're not interested, or if we'd like to launch an LOI, we don't expect the seller to keep detailed financial statements. We can rebuild these ourselves. It makes the process simpler because they only need to focus on one conversation. Instead of talking to multiple parties, they can just talk to one or two parties that they're interested in, which makes it a bit easier for them. We can work at their pace, and you know, there's no fee going to come out of the selling price. They can keep 100% for themselves. 那嗯呃,呃，像 aggregator， 也就是说像 elevated brands， 他们在收购品牌的时候呢，一般的情况下面，他们呃对比呃中间商，那么呃中间商需要花呃一到两个月，但是他们只需要花两到五天的时间。中间商需要看的财务报表，他们不看财务报表，因为他们能够看懂你的亚马逊的数据。那第三一个呢，就是呃你不用去做很多的一些沟通，因为他们。呃，直接会呃明白你的整个的亚马逊的运营是什么样子。那么与此同时呢，还有很重要的一点就是刚刚说到了，就是中间商他们如果一旦成交的话，他会从你的成交的呃金额中间拿去百分之十的佣金。但是对于 aggregator 像这样子的，就是 elevated brands 这样子的直接投资方的话，那么你是完全一分钱都不用去出的。Matt，、uh, So when they look at the exit options, there's a few different options. So they can either talk to an aggregator, who solely looks at buying Amazon businesses, or they can talk to a private equity company. Private equity companies typically look at much larger transactions, and their due diligence process is going to take a lot longer. High net worth individuals are also sometimes looking at buying Amazon brands, and these high net worth individuals typically. Rebuilt and sold an Amazon business themselves, and are they looking to do something similar again? The last option is a strategic buyer. A strategic buyer can be a corporate buyer who operates in a very similar industry, and they might be willing to pay a bit more for the business. 那呃，在投资方这边来去说呢，一共呃，相对来去说会有四种类型。首先，第一种类型呢就是 aggregator。那么，其实我们呃可以把它理解为天使投资人。那么呃呃，第二种类型呢就是 private equity。那么我们在中文里边叫做私募基金。那么呃 ，aggregator 一般他们是不对于公司的整个的运作额会有很大的要求，但是呢，私募基金会对于呃大型的收购更感兴趣，就是说你。如果要说现在在亚马逊已经做得非常大了，那么在这种情况下面，很有可能私募基金会非常感兴趣。那第三一个呢，就是嗯呃,呃这个嗯、呃呃、这个亚马逊的呃自己的这个私人投资方。那么现在亚马逊的这这种私人投资方是指的是谁呢？呃，比如说像刚刚他。呃，给出来一个这个呃美国的卖家哈，这个美国的卖家我我不大了解 ，Matthew 那边更更了解一些。那么是呃，在美国很出名的一个卖家，那么他自己在亚马逊做了品牌之后，把品牌给卖卖掉了之后，那么他用自己拿到的钱，又来去投到更多的小的品牌上面去。那么第四一种呢，就是啊、呃、战略呃投资方。那么从战略投资方上面来去说呢，往往他们跟你是在同一个或者相关品类里边，那么他们觉得你的销售额对他们。形成竞争，或者说有助于他们增长，那么他们会对于你来去进行收购。Matt, when choosing the,、uh, your partner to sell the business to, you want to think of it very carefully. So most Amazon sellers, you see, the business that they built, it's like their baby. They don't want to just give it to anyone. So you want to make sure you understand properly who you are selling your business to. So you should think of it more like a marriage and ask key questions before deciding. So the main questions that you want to understand from the seller is you want to understand 
What experience do they have running a similar business to yours? What experience do they have buying companies? What's their performance track record post acquisition? Do they have the funding secured to close the business? How long is it going to take them to close? And are they going to be a good steward? Are they going to look after your brand after they take over? 那嗯， um, 在这个地方呢，大家都应该清楚你，你、呃、啊，我们做亚马逊其实没有一个人愿意把自己的品牌卖掉。至于像自己的啊、呃，这个专门的这这些这些啊、呃，这些小孩一样的。那么与此同时呢，你如果要说再去卖卖一个品牌的时候，那么整个这个过程就像结婚一样的。那么 Matthew Matthew 刚才给出了很形象的这样的一个啊、呃、一个比喻哈。那在这个地方呢，呃，大家需要去啊、呃、知道的就是你需要。来去呃考虑的是几点。首先，第一个就是投资方到底他们对于亚马逊有没有经验，那么这会直接呃影响到整个的这个进度以及说是顺不顺利。那第二一个呢，就是大家需要知道的就是，嗯呃，在呃他们在过去的时候采购了哪这个并购了哪些品牌，那么这些品牌到底在亚马逊上表现是什么样子？第三一个就是他们自己手上有没有足够的资金，那么可以直接说哦，我今天敲定了。马上就给你转这个啊、呃、钱过来。那么第四一个呢，就是呃要花多长时间来去啊、呃、投资。那么第五一个呢，就是呃他们能不能够真正成为你的一个好的伙伴，能够帮助你的品牌更进一步的成长。Matt， we've seen lots of horror stories where Amazon sellers have tried to sell their businesses to other aggregators， but then at the end of the due diligence process。The aggregators couldn't raise the money to close the business, and we've also seen situations where they've sold the business to the aggregators, but the other aggregators didn't have the experience to continue running the business afterwards, and they significantly lost sales traction, and they basically destroyed the brand that the seller built. 那嗯呃比较呃大家所有人都不希望看到呢，就是你的品牌在被并购了之后，那么在这种情况下面。啊、呃，当然，这种并购是呃，可能是呃，持股股权或者说是直接呃购买，那么这个啊、呃、是相关的一些细节了。但是大家都希望能够看到是你的品牌能够更长远的能够来去发展。刚刚我们讲过，但是呃呃 ，Matthew 这边看到的一些情况呢，就是很多的一些品牌被并购了之后，因为相关的人他们跟卖家之间并没有一个默契，或者并没有一个更多的一个啊、呃、相关的一个运营的经验，所以说反倒造成了这个。品牌并不能够啊、呃，并不能够把销量做得更好。Matt, so when you do sell your business, there's a few different ways that the deal can be structured. We can either offer a hundred percent cash deal. This is where we would pay the full purchase price upfront on the day of closing. So the advantage of this is it makes a clean break. You know you've got cash in hand. It gives you certainty. The disadvantage is You lose out on the growth. If you know the business can get bigger, you're going to lose out on that upside, and you have no involvement in the business going forward. No.、Um, okay, Matthew, you can finish the third part if you want. So I will translate、okay. all three together. The next, the next option is an earnout. The earnout structure is where we pay you a portion upfront, maybe seventy to eighty percent upfront. And then we leave the twenty to thirty percent in the business, and then we pay you a multiple in twelve months, and maybe in twenty-four months, and maybe in thirty-six months, depending on how big the business is. So this way, you get to share in the upside because we've got a team of sixty people. So if we buy your business, we're going to deploy a marketing team. We're going to deploy someone just to look at the PPC. We're going to deploy someone just to focus on the inventory management. We're going to deploy someone to do the rebranding. Someone to optimize the Amazon listing, increase the video content. So when we deploy so many resources at the business, we can grow that business very quickly. So it is beneficial for the seller to keep some of the earnout so that they can get a benefit from the upside if it does grow. The one risk is if the aggregator doesn't have the experience to run the business, they might run the business backwards, which can limit your performance. If they can't, don't have the experience that they claim. The last option is a partial sale. We don't see this happen much in the Amazon world because it it becomes very complicated. It's hard to manage, and most of the time, 
the aggregators have certain funding structures based on the debt that they get. And this, you know, starts restricting the debt funding that they do get. So it's not something that we see often, but if the business is big enough, they would be willing to consider it. OK， 那啊 m a t h e w 这边呃刚刚说到呢，就是啊、呃、三种的啊呃,呃并购形式。那么第一种并购形式呢，就是百分之百立即收购。那么百分之百立即收购对于大家来去说，那是啊、呃、就是嗯、呃、简单切割。那么卖了之后，那么拿钱，那就呃就就完成整个的交易了。那么之后呢，嗯、呃。这个就相当于是你的整个的品牌在亚马逊上兑现了，那么这样子的话，以后的品牌跟你可能也并没有太多的关系，这是第一种。那么第二一种呢，叫 earn out。那么 earn out 是什么意思呢？就是说，呃，现在，那么，嗯、呃，这个投资方会给你直接百分之八十的。啊、嗯，或者百分之七十，或者百分之八十的啊、呃，你现在的这个呃估值的钱，那么给到你，也就是说你可以兑现百分之七十到百分之八十。那么在这之后呢，他们会在后面的一到三年的时间里边，这可会跟你来去商讨。那么一到三年的时间里边，那么呃他们会跟你一起用他们的团队把你的品牌推向另外的一个高度。那这个是什么意思呢？也就是说他们自己会有专门自己的亚马逊 CPC 运营团队，他们会有专门自己的红人群。呃，整个的这个呃呃签约的红人，他们会有自己的整个的这个呃嗯呃、嗯嗯、视频营销的整个的部门来去把把这个品牌更更规模化的运作起来。那么在这之后的一到三年的时间里边，那么呃呃他们刚刚呃就是剩下的这个百分之二十到百分之三十还没有跟你兑现的这些呃这个这个啊、呃、金额呢，会按照后面一到三年的这个约定期的估值，也就是你的销售额往上涨的。情况下面，那么你会获得的是更高的收益。那呃，第三一种呢，叫做。呃，叫做 partial s e l l 那么这种 partial s e l l 更多的集中，呃，其实呃，就是他们看到的并不多，呃，因为为什么呢？因为这个最主要的是集中在一些非常知名的一些品牌，那么。这些品牌在亚马逊上做起来以后，那么他们会，嗯、呃、嗯、呃，就是他们的品牌影响力，呃，足够大到可以让投资人说，那么我只是在现在来去入股你百分之五十。或者说是百分之八十，呃，但是这种情况下面呢，呃，也可能会造成大家都知道，就是，呃，只要是做过这样子的一些，嗯、呃，啊、呃，融资啊或者并购经验的，那么大家都应该知道，这有可能会在后面造成，呃，品牌的运营方，也就是说，呃，大家呃自己和这个投资方会在后面的运营里边产生一系列的这样那样的一些问题。但是呢，呃，也正是因为这个原因，所以说，呃，现在的整个的亚马逊的投资人更倾向于的是第一种和第二种。Matt. Yeah, some of the key factors that we find that really drive the valuation up is if the business is less complex. The fewer SKUs that a business has, the more we would be willing to pay for it. The more recurrent revenue that the company has, the more value will become. You know, if it has subscribe and save users that we can see are buying every month or every few months, if the business has high profit margins, it's going to increase the value. If the business has a strong review mode, is you know has a strong recognizable band, or if the business has high growth potential, all of those factors will increase the value of the business. 呃，那呃，针对大家运营，也就是说，呃，大家再去呃呃这个运营的过程中间会，会会让你的品牌更具有价值。那么，呃，可能以前我们并没有想过，但是现在可能大家更多的可以去看到的就是，呃，如果要说你在运营的时候，你的呃整个的销量在不断的以呃不断的增长，那么这会让你的品牌价值更具呃更更更品牌更有价值。第二一个呢，就是如果要说说你的产品的复购率会变得更好的话，那么也就是说有更多的客户在你这个地方复购的话，那么你的品牌会更有价值。那么呃呃，就是呃第三一个呢，就是如果要说呃你的整个的啊、呃、品牌，那么你的呃各个方面的这个啊、呃，因为刚刚举了很多例子啊，我在这地方突然一下子突然一下子漏了几个例子，反正总之呢，就是大家需要知道，就是你的整个品牌价值跟你的运营现在的啊、呃、整体的这样的一个水。Equally, some of the factors that we find will drive the value of the business down is if the business has poor account health, if they've got low profit margins, if they've got very high skew counts, 
And if the business has evidence of black hats or if they bought reviews, you know, it's going to reduce the value someone's willing to pay for the business. Now, and if there's a complicated supply chain. Okay. Now, um, 呃，在这边呢，就是呃，刚刚 Matthew 给了一些会影响到你的产品价值的这样的一些运营方式。那么这些运营方式就是第一个，嗯、呃，你的呃整个的这个呃产品线那可能会比较杂乱。那么第二一个呢，就是你用了一些呃所谓的一些啊、呃、黑帽的一些技法呃技巧来去让你的销量来去增加。那么呃还有的呢，就是呃如果要说你是整个这个店铺进行大量的铺货跟。卖，那么所有这些都会影响到你整个的品牌的价值。呃，还有一点他说到的就是，如果要说你的整个的这个供应链比较麻烦，也就是说，呃，你自己现在有品牌，但是你对于这个工厂并没有，你自己并没有工厂，或者说你并没有。对于工厂有足够的影响力，那或者你在工厂里面没有持股，那么这种情况下面都有可能会影响到你的品牌价值。Matt， I think Rob will talk about the deal process next. OK， 那现在就是 Rob 来去跟到大家去介绍一下，就是整个的亚马逊的品牌的呃收购的整个的一个啊、呃、过程是什么样子的。Thanks, Matt. Um, what 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 makes buying and selling Amazon Businesses so interesting is that they can be closed very, very quickly. So as Yang Yi, are you going? Yeah. Uh, uh, Rob, 刚才说到呢，就是呃，大家如果要说呃，现在看任何一种融资方式，可能你们都很难去看到的是，所有这些融资，那么呃，可能都没有比亚马逊品牌收购来的这么快。Yeah, Rob. So generally, we can buy the Amazon account in less than thirty days,、um, which makes it really exciting if you are the owner of an Amazon account. Because if this is something that you are thinking about,、um, and you work with a buyer like Elevate Brands, we can,、um, from first contact to close, potentially have acquired the account within thirty days and paid the cash in your bank account. 那么，呃、uh, ，Elevate Brands 一般的情况下面，整个的收购只需要花三十天不到的时间。那么这三十天不到不到的时间怎么计算呢？就是从你开始来去，呃，跟他们接触，一直到他们给你把这个呃并购的费用打给你。那么这个时间是在三十天以内。Rob， thank you. So so generally the way the way the process works is um the seller would approach a, a party like ours um. We will typically sign a non-disclosure agreement, an NDA,、um, so that everybody's information is protected.、Um, if we like the business, we will generally LOI, provide a, L- a letter of intent, which essentially is a bid,、um, within five days of signing the NDA. 那呃，前面的两个步骤呢，就第一个，那么呃，如果要是说进行相关的这样的一个呃这个并购的话呢，那么呃前期会有 NDA 这样的一个保密协议，呃，也就是说保证双方的整个这个呃相关的呃信息是保密的。呃，如果要说呃接下来，那么呃投资方也就是 Alibaba Brands 对于大家的整个的品牌是更感兴趣的，呃感兴趣的话呢，就会发一个。信件出来叫做 LOI， 那么呃，这个就是说我对你的啊、呃、这个产品呃呃品牌是感兴趣，我们愿意来去啊、呃、收购的。Rob， thank you. So 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 once the LOI is signed,、um, we will provide a, an information request list.、Um, this is、uh, getting access to your seller central account,、um, financial reports,、uh, purchase orders. Uh, bank bank reconciliations. 那呃，在这之后呢，呃，你可能需要去准备的文件是这几个。那其实这跟大家平时的运营也很有关。第一个呢，就是你亚马逊的卖家中心的相关的一些呃这个数据。那么第二一个呢，就是呃你自己的。这个嗯呃呃呃整个的这样的一个成交的一个数据，那么第三一个呢，就是你的呃银行呃呃呃呃这个采购的相关的这些订单，也就是你在向哪个地方采购，还是你是工厂直接来去生产的，那么呃之后呢，就是你的相关的一个银行的流水单。Rob， so we will spend the first ten days um reviewing all that provided financial information. 
and it generally focuses on two buckets. One is the health of the seller central account. And second is, is the financial due diligence, which really is reconciling um, the financial statements to the bank account, to the purchase orders. 那呃呃，在这之后呢，他们呃可能更会看到的是呃两个，就是呃会去做这个尽职调查的时候是两个方面。那么第一个方面呢，就是你的亚马逊的卖家中心的这样的一个账户的健康度。那么第二一个呢，就是你的整个的这个啊呃,呃资金或者财务报表。Rob， so so once。If there are no red flags detected in that in that initial ten days, we will then、um, focus on、uh, the supply chain. So we will meet the supplier of the products. We will review the contracts with the factory.、Um, we will get assurance that Elevate Brands, as the new owner of the brand, will still be able to source the product from the incumbent supplier. 那么，呃，如果要说这一步过了之后呢，那么 Elevate Brands， 呃 ，Elevate Brands 就会直接来去跟大家面对面的来去，呃，接下到后面的工作。那整个的这个接下工作呢，就是，嗯、呃，包括的是，呃，跟你进行一些更多的一些这个，呃，合约化的一些，呃，呃，签署。那么还有很重要的呢，就是，嗯、呃，你需要能够，呃，把相关的这个，呃，供应链，然后。能够告诉给，呃、嗯，这就是介绍给 Albert Brands， 那么同时在这种情况下面告诉给他，那么现在 Albert Brands 会来去收购你的品牌，后面会来去运营你的品牌，那么希望供应链能够呃继续的来去，呃呃来去稳定的供货。那么在这一点上面来去说，其实对于我们做工厂的会员也会有很大的帮助。也就是说，你在亚马逊上有了这样一个品牌之后，那么在后面其实你就把亚马逊的你自己的这样的一个呃很辛苦做的。B to B 的店铺完全变成了一个规模化运营，而且是基本上是呃由呃美国公司来去代运营的一个 B to B 的运营模式了。Rob， 嗯、um, ，So if that all goes smoothly, negotiate what's called the asset purchase agreement, which essentially is the legal contract which documents、um, the transfer of the account and associated entity from The current seller to elevate brands. 那呃，在这之后呢，就是相关的资产的交接。那么这些资产的交接呢，其实最主要的就是亚马逊账户啦，然后还有刚刚说的这个嗯，整个的供应链啊，然后呃，还有一些呃，银行账户的交接啊，等等等等。Rob. Then we will, if we all agree, we will sign the legal contract. And Elevate Brands will transfer the cash into what's called an escrow agent in the United States.、Um, when it, the funds are sitting with the escrow agent, we will then prepare to transfer the seller central account from the seller to Elevate Brands over the course of one week. It is done gradually. 嗯、呃，那呃，在所有刚刚说的这些准备工作完成了之后呢，那呃，剩下来的呢就是呃 e l e v a t Brands 会跟呃大家来去签一个整个的这个转交协议。那么签了转交协议之后，呃，之后呢，呃 e l e v a t Brands 就会把钱打到在美国的这样的一个呃中间方里边。那么呃，一般的情况下面说到 Escrow 呢，那可能就大家理解为 PayPal 或者说是律师事务所等等等等。那嗯、呃，在呃。之后的这一个星期的时间里边，那就是把呃亚马逊的相关的账户来去转交给 e l e v a t Brands。那么之后整个的这样呃这这这个这这这整个的这个过程大概是一个星期的时间。Rob， 嗯、um, ，and then that's it， and then the account the business will close， uh the the deal will close， and the seller will receive the funds， um and then Elevate Brands will own the the account going forward。I think you missed the transfer of trademark.、Uh, yeah, so that's the final step. So once once it'll close, then the brand, the the trademark will be the final point that gets transferred. Okay. 那么呃，还有很重要的一点呢，就是呃，品牌的所有方也会去转到呃 Elevate Brands。那呃，所有这些交接完了之后，那么整个的这个嗯、呃、过程就完成了。那么呃，钱就会。So that's the point that you will issue the cash to. The seller, right? Yes, correct. It will then get released from the escrow agent to the seller. 那么在那个时间点呢，就是相关的啊、um ，所有的这些
啊，被呃这个投投资款就就是相当于并购款，就直接打到大家的呃银行账户里面去了。那么就是大家可以直接提出来自己来去用了。OK， Rob。Thank you. So that's then it, it's you know the final step is the deal closing and the uh, transition,、um, which we kind of just step through.、Um, I, I think one thing、uh, to make sure everyone aware is transferring seller accounts can be quite complicated. So it's very important that the seller make sure that the buyer has experience in transferring the account. So what, how how what do you mean? Get the buyer has experience in in transfer the account. So, for example, Elevate Brands has done、uh, close to twenty、uh, Amazon account transfers from the old seller to Elevate Brands.、Um, and what 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 sellers need to be careful of is if they are selling their account to an aggregator, they need to make sure that aggregator has enough experience to transfer the account. Ah,、oh, right. Okay. 嗯、呃，那么呃，后面呢，就是亚马逊的整个的账户的交接呢，相当于呃，涉及到亚马逊后台的这样那样的一些一些安全性的问题，所以说这个啊、呃、是会会在后面这个啊、呃、整个的过程，当然是运营方面的，那是由呃两边共同来去完成。Yeah, Rob. And once the account has been transferred, as we mentioned before, the cash will hit the seller's account within around five days.、Um, So the release of the funds is very quick. 那么呃，整个这些交接完了之后，那么呃，大家会在五天之内收到现金。Yeah, Rob. Um, and, and then there's some final questions there that the that the seller should be asking a buyer. Um, firstly, does the buyer require the seller to stay around、uh, during any transition period? You know, if you are the seller, maybe you want to go to the beach. Um, and Celebrate and go on a long holiday with your new funds,、um, but it's important to make sure that the expectations are set with the buyer about what they might still require you to do going forward. Okay, 呃，那后面呢就是呃，整个的希望呃两边可以共同的来去把整个的这个交接可以啊顺利的完成。Yeah, Rob. Um, and then the final point is, if if there is an earnout component component or performance payment,、um, make sure as the seller that you continue to get access、um, about information on the business, because obviously the future performance of the business will drive your earnout payment. So make sure that you have、um, rights to continue to get access to information about the health of the business. 那么，呃、uh, ，you mean for the brand, for the bot, for the seller, they need to make sure that, uh, they can still get access to the performance information. Correct. If there is an earnout component, if they're receiving future、uh, right. payments based on the performance of the business. Right. Okay. 那么，呃，如果要说是，呃，这个并不是百分之百并购的话，而是后面，比如说刚刚说到了一到三年，那么呃会会共同把这个品牌共同运营的话呢，那么呃大家一样是在整个这个账户里边会一样的会来去参与到整个的运营的过程中间。Yeah, Rob.、Uh, next. So that so that's so that's it. That's that's the five steps of the、uh, of the FBA exit process.、Um, we can field any questions at the end.、Um, now we just wanted to talk about what. Why sellers can trust Elevate Brands as a buyer of their Amazon accounts? Right. Okay. I think there's some.、Uh, there's one question. 那么大家有问题可以在啊、um, 这个聊天框这个地方提出来哈。那呃第一个问题呢，应该是洋葱头我们嘉兴的卖家提到的，就是什么类型的专利？嗯、um, ，那呃是外观专利还是说是是是这个设计专利，对吧？ Uh, so Rob,、uh, one of our sellers they ask a question.、Uh, what type of patents they need to、uh, register or file in the states、uh, or in different countries? Will that be design patents or um, the um, the、uh, what's what's the other other patents? Utility utility patents. Yeah, utility payment、uh, patents. Yeah. So what kind of patents do do you think they should、uh, file? So it it obviously depends 
depends on the type of product, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, if definitely the first step is to always make sure you have um, some basic trademarks around the brand name um, and what it is selling, because if you can get those trademarks, then you can get brand registry with Amazon. So that's that's the first step. Mm -hmm. So the first step is trademark, right? Trademark, correct. Yeah. Then if um, if the product is unique and is differentiated, then definitely try get both a utility patent and a design patent if you can get it. Um, but we would definitely recommend applying because once you have those patents, um, you can then potentially get other sellers kicked off Amazon who are selling that same product. And obviously if you can remove other sellers from Amazon for selling your product, the value of your brand will increase significantly. Okay. 嗯, 那么现在呢, 嗯, 就是Rob的建议呢, 就是当然品牌备案是第一步, 那, 呃, 第二一个呢, 就是其实外, 呃, 专利呢, 呃, 大家无论是发明专利还是外观专利, 都可以来去, 呃, 呃, 来去备案, 但是现在的整个的在, 呃, 美国这边做了很重要的一点, 就是做亚马逊的时候, 一旦专利抢注了之后 那么, 呃, 会接下来去做的事情, 就是会跟亚马逊说, 让相关的这样的一些竞争对手下降, 在美国，或者说在呃注册专利注册地当地所有的平台，包括呃eBay啊等等等等。呃，那在这个时候呢，其实专利刚刚Rob说的就是可以真正保证大家能够在亚马逊上有一个有一个相当于是垄断式的一个
。那么刚刚也是提到过的，就是整个的现在的估值已经比啊十十八个月之前呢，基本上是啊成高出了一倍。Uh, okay, Rob. Uh, I think this and another question, Jonathan Chen. Um, he asked is, uh, do you how do you purchase a brand? Um, uh, uh, how do you purchase brand from Chinese seller? Of course, the brand will be registered in the states or other countries, but the seller, uh, they the seller is are actually from China. So, um, is there any special requirements for the sellers from China? Um, no, I, I think the approach, you know, we we have acquired many accounts from U.S. sellers um, who are sourcing and manufacturing the product in China. So there is no difference between us buying an account from someone in China who is selling on Amazon USA and sourcing the product from China versus someone who is based in China selling on Amazon USA and also sourcing from China. The key. The the key hurdle will just be around language,、um, but、um, we can find ways around that because the great thing is, Amazon USA and Sell Essential standardize、um, standardizes all the uh, numbers um, in English. I think that change that that's something changed very recently, right?、Uh, because last month when I spoke to Matthew. And、uh, he said it's still probably oh it's Matthew or you I think I spoke to you regarding to it and he said、um, there's um, um, the Chinese sellers they need to、um, the, probably they the, the, the,、uh, not so many investors looking for Chinese sellers before but I think、uh, now you probably the first one that start looking at the Chinese sellers is that correct. Yes, correct. So I, I think more、uh, Western buyers will be looking at acquiring Chinese seller accounts.、Um, so it, it it is on our radar, and that's why we are speaking to you all today. But I think you know it's very important、um, to start getting ready today,、um, and we're happy to provide advice. You know, following up from this presentation, but you know, try create some financial accounts in English. Try. Create the bank accounts in English. Try um, get um, as many things、uh, in your business happening in English. It, it'll just make it a lot easier for a buyer like ours to、um, to buy the、uh, account. 好，那呃，刚刚呃，针对于建熙问到的这个问题呢，其实。嗯，呃，这边这边，因为因为因为这个问题呢，上个月我跟 Matthew 和 Rob 讨论了一次。那么其实呢，呃，在讨论之前呢，针对于中国卖家，确实，呃，是并购方是呃，基本上是没有太多经验的。但是呢，呃，现在呢 ，Elevate Brands 呵呵在汇网的介绍中国卖家的介绍之下，就介绍中国卖家之下，呃，他们。应该来说是现在成为了第一个愿意在中国来去收购品牌的呃这个投资方。那他呃说到的最主要的问题呢，其实他刚刚说过，就他们收了基本上现在都是在美国或者说是其他的一些英语国家的这样一些啊、呃、品牌。那嗯、呃，在他们来去看呢，现在他们可以理解到就是呃这些公司其实也都是在中国那边来去找的产品。那么整个的并购对于他们来去说是过程很有可能是一样的，但最主要是由两个方面大家需要去注意。第一个方面呢就是英语，那么你提供的材料是不是有英呃是不是呃这个英英文的？那么呃包括的是银行记录啊等等等等。那第二一个呢就是在于你的嗯、呃、这个呃呃财务的数据是不是符合要求的？嗯、呃、，OK Rob， 呃、uh, ，I I have a question。Um, if say the Chinese actually Chinese sellers can't receive money into U.S. bank account, they can only receive money from Payoneer or Worldfirst.、Uh, will that make any change to the transaction?、Uh, we'll we'll have to. It shouldn't be. We 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 should be able to transfer the the money using a intermediary. Yeah, it should be possible. Yeah, because basically all you need to do is just change the, after after the、um, the purchase. So you can you can just change the bank account into the U.S. one, right?、Um, yes, correct. Right. 那么呃，这边呢，我也帮建熙对做
呃，这个追加问了一个问题哈，那在这边呢，就是呃，如果要是说大家的这个现在我们在中国都是用皮卡呀，用呃 w o r l d f i r s t 来去呃 WF 来去呃收款，那么这会不会有什么问题？那呃会不会不承认？那这边 Rob 说的呢，其实是呃没有什么问题的，只要是有英语就可以了。呃，好，那间隙这边我希望能够回答到你的问题了哈。呃 ，OK， 呃。Rob, I think Edward got another question for you. I think you can read his English. Ah,、uh, yeah, about the factory.、Um, yes, look, that that's a very good question because obviously, if the seller owns the factory and owns the seller account,、um, and then just wants to sell the seller account,、um, we will have to get comfortable that the factory will still supply us.、Um, so. It, it is not something that we will say no to, but clearly we need to、uh, we need to understand、um, the product and understand、um, the relationship with the factory. Uh huh. Uh, that um. 我相信 Edward 应该是可以理解哈，我也在这个地方再次跟大家去说一下，就是，嗯，刚才 Rob 说到，就是如果要说呃一个工厂，那么他自己运营亚马逊的账户，那么他把这个账户卖出来了之后，嗯、呃，那会不就是呃呃。嗯 Alvey Brands 这边会有什么样的？对于这样子的公司会有什么样的一些看法？那其实呢，嗯 ，Rob 刚刚说到呢，就是说，呃，他们需要能够保障的，就是这个工厂能够持续的为这个品牌供货。呃，而且呢，我在去跟 Rob 和 Matthew 开会的时候，其实在这之前我们开了很多次会哈。那么再去开会的时候呢，也会呃，他们说到他们的关切点，就是大家知道现在的供应链还是在中国，那么他们并不希望看到的是说，呃，买了这个品牌之后，这个工厂突然又跟这个，嗯呃,呃，这这跟 Elevate Brands 来去开始竞争，呃，或者说跟 Elevate Brands 来去断货。那所以说在这里呢。刚刚也专门提到了，就是你的产品需要在美国是有专利备案的。那么，其实，在整个进并购的过程中间，不仅仅并购的是亚马逊的账户，不仅仅并购的是品牌，而很重要的一点还是你的专利。那么之后呢，跟工厂可能更多的是需要一个持续供货的一个协议，在这个地方。好，那呃，在这边说完了以后呢，我们再看一下子，就是呃，冯小姐。呃，在这边呃遇到这样子的专利被抢注，呃，怎么办？只能够提供律师证据，有没有其他方式 ？OK， Rob， this is a very interesting question. We got the Chinese sellers, and um, not not just one. Actually, there are lots of them. Uh, the patent is actually filed by the um the this own the own products. The patent is actually filed in China. But when the U.S. distributors got the products, they started filing the the patents in the in the states, and eventually they just lost the seller privilege on Amazon just because、um, the distributors getting the patents.、Um, I know it's not relevant to what we are talking about now,、uh, but can you give any suggestion to our sellers how they can avoid this sort of problem, or if this sort of problem happening right now, what they can do? Well, yeah, you know, that that that's that's a question for a lawyer, right? That that's where it becomes complicated. If someone else has stolen your patent in the U.S. and got that with brand registry somehow, then it will create an issue for you as the brand owner because it's difficult to kick those people off Amazon.、Um, so yeah, that that becomes complicated.、Um, but. Yeah, either, either there's either two ways you can do it. One, you can either kick, you can either try stop stop selling the product to resellers or to wholesalers, so they can't keep selling product on Amazon. That's one way. Or two is to appoint a U.S. attorney to、um, try challenge the trademark.、Um, now, it obviously, depends on how big and valuable the account is. But if it is a big business, then Um, it might be worth、uh, investing in that. Okay. Maybe the third option is just try register the trademark in the U.S. when you register it in China as well. Right.、Um, okay. 呃，好，那关关于冯小姐的这个问题呢，其实，呃，刚才 Rob 给出来的意见是有几个，嗯、呃，那么，呃
呃，最主要的呢，就是呃，希望你能够知道，就是一旦遇到这种情况呢，其实是你是很被动的，嗯、呃，所以你需要，你需要，大家需要记得专利很重要。刚刚说了专利在亚马逊上的这种垄断性，那么对于竞争对手的这样的一一个一个一个打击也会是非常强劲。那呃，除此之外呢，就是如果要说你遇到了这种情况，我不知道冯小姐是不是这两天问我在微信上问我的会员哈，那么其实刚刚 Rob 给出来的意见啊、呃，和我那个时候给出来的意见。呃，会会有一点像，但是呃，希望他他他说的是，你可以在美国去找律师，但是在这个地方，我可以给到你的意见呢，就是说，嗯、呃，首先你的这个专利需要在国内有注册，无论你在国内有没有注册，你需要跟这一个啊、呃、专利方去说，告诉给他，第一，嗯呃,呃，我这个所有的这个产品，我是我在中国有专利的。没有任何一家工厂可以在我这个地方来去拿到其这个生产同样的东西。如果要说你把我现在告下来的话，那么我可以让你在所有美国这边断货。那么这是你需要能够去做的，也就是无论你现在有没有做这个专利，你都需要这么去说。那么这可以更多的给到对方一个威慑性，他最多只能去拿到呃美国那边的销售权，但是供货方。嗯，是这个供应链还是应该掌握在你这里。那嗯呃，再这一点呢，就是嗯，刚才 Rob 也给出来的建议呢，就是呃，你其实也需要能够去看一下，就是你有没有能够在美国这边有更多的一些渠道。会能够来去呃销售你的产品，但其实我我觉得这点很难了，因为一旦这个产品专利在美国已经备案的话，其实你已经很难啊、呃、能够找到更多的渠道来去做，所以希望这个地方能够呃能够呃给你相关的建议，呃、uh, ，right， 呃、uh, ，OK， Rob， I think or Matthew， I think you can see James question here， maybe you can you can um read and answer。Uh, this is oh, what transferring oh, 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 the money. Oh right, that's that's the same question. Okay, uh, uh, is it possible to transfer the money to personal accounts in CA or US? Will this cause tax issue for Chinese? <laughs> I think this is more about accounting issue. Um, right. Um, okay. So we, uh -huh. I, yeah. I mean, we can transfer the money wherever they prefer. If they prefer the money in the US or Canada. Or in China, we would do either. But the problem is, if there's tax implications for us, we're gonna pay the amount net of the tax implications. Oh, so so we you incur. you're gonna take care of the tax rather than rather than the chi Chinese end, right? No, no, uh, we won't. So for oh, example, won't. we looked at buying okay. a company in Ireland, and when we bought the company in Ireland, our money would be locked in Ireland. So we would have to pay money to send. The the trademarks and the registration to our company in the U.S. Right. And as a result, we told the buyer we're going to pay them seventy percent less. Right. To cover the thirty percent tax that we'd incur. Right. So, okay, understood. Ah,、yeah. uh, 那在这边 James， 我呃，我我不知道你说的问题是跟并购相关呢，还是跟你自己平时的转账相关。那这个地方啊、呃，跟并购相关的话呢 ，Matthew 刚才给你的。呃，答案就是，如果要说这也是投资的一个惯例，就是如果要说一旦这个投资方把钱转给你的话，那么如果要说当地的这个政府或者税务局要去收税，那应该是由啊、呃、你来去承担的。那么如果要你这个问题跟这个并购不相关，那么你只是问一下你自己能不能够转账的话，我可以把我的经验告诉给你，就是，呃，你呃你在美国或者说是加拿大开的这个账户，那么在这边的整个的反洗钱其实都是非。非常严格的。那么你如果要说，嗯、呃，就是我我我我我可以说的就是，你可以随时收到美银行的电话，而且呢，你的钱可以收，但是转不出去。所以你转出去的话，你银行需要你提供很多的一些所谓的啊、呃、相关的辅助证明。但是你这样子被银行问过几次之后，往往银行后面就不会再去嗯。呃对你的前进前出有更多的一些管控了。你作为中国的公民，那么你在美国那边可以开银行账户，可以来去收管，不需要上税。但是你更多的是需要能够去填一个像亚马逊一样的 W 9这样一个表格，证明你并不是美国的纳税居民。那在这个时候你可以收这个款。但是呢，还有一点呢，就是。呃，我们作为中国的供货商，往往大家会有这个钱全部进来之后，马上又全部出去的情况，这个在西方国家是视为洗钱的行为。所以说，呃。
这是呃，希望回答到你的问题哈。那嗯，杨旭刚刚提到说品牌估值，刚刚其实说到了品牌估值，我们在前面有非常呃整个长的一段的录屏，希望我我们这个录屏会跟到大家去分享出来，那么希望呃大家可以在回放的时候能够看到。嗯 ，OK， so Matt， I think is pretty much close to <laughs> to the end， right？ So we have five minutes. Will that be okay? Yeah, that's perfect. All right. Okay. 那呃， uh, 好 ，James， 你这边的问题，嗯、um, ，我我就先跳过去了哈。那呃，婷、uh, 毅，那么以上的产品先先前注册国内的专利，那在这之后，哦，我我不知道婷毅，你你这个是提问还是什么？然后 ，How can we contact you? OK， 那呃、uh, ，Rob 和 Matt 已经把他的这个联系方式给放过来了。嗯，那 OK， 那呃，这边呢也有他们在 LinkedIn 上面的相关的这一些呃链接，大家也可以来去来去呃跟他们来去直接的来去沟通哈。那么最后呢，我在这个地方呢，希望能够给到大家呃结束的时候再说一点。So Matt, I will uh just take the Um, screen sharing now. So, um, will that be okay? Yeah, sure. Right. So, um, okay. Uh, 大家可以看到我的屏幕吗？不知道能不能够看到我的屏幕。嗯、um, ，OK。应该是可以看到我的屏幕的哈。在这边呢，我需要最后一点呢，结束的时候跟到大家去说一下呢，这是呃很有名的一个一个呃媒体叫做 Business Wire。那么他们在今天，正好这也是凑巧，在今天的时候，今天是呃美国时间的三月六号，那刚刚发出来了一个新闻，就是呃也告诉给大家，现在跨境电商的版图是怎么样再去变哈。就是呃 Elevate Brand 现在已经请了有三十年的这个呃供应链整合经验的。Um, um, uh, Amandio, um, Muzi. How I don't know how to spell it. It looks like an Italian name. Muzi.、Uh, a Muzi. Okay, Muzi. Muzi. A Muzi.、Yeah. Right. Uh, it's Italian, right? <laughs> so. Yes, Italian. Right. Okay. 那么，呃，他现在呢，会，嗯，呃，现在已经成为了 Elevate Brand 的整个的供应链的整合的啊、嗯，呃，这个呃负责人。那么，呃，他以前是在 IBM、戴尔，甚至说是在联想里边来去工作过。所以说，呃，大家可以知道的就是现在整个的亚马逊的版图是怎么样来去变。那么，大家会面对的这样的一些竞争到底是什么？那么，无论今天大家看到了我们的整个的这个分享，大家是认为自己的啊、呃、这个销售额够，还是自己？销售不够，或者自己认为自己是愿意去卖自己的呃这个品牌，还是不愿意去卖自己品牌，那么都希望我作为汇网来去说，大家都希望是能够把现在的整个的一个市场的竞争的趋势能够告诉给大家。那么希望大家能够知道，闭门造车，往往我们并不能够迎接更。并不能够为呃这个即将到来的这样的一个巨变做好准备，所以呢，呃，非常感谢大家关注今天我们的整个的活动。那么也非常感谢呃两位嘉宾，一个是 Matthew， 然后还有一个是 Rob。Thank you Matthew, thank you Rob. I hope Elevate Brands will actually have your name um um getting really big in China, and um、uh, we um I believe yeah you you will get a lot of tensions from our sellers too. Thanks. Thank you so much, everyone. And、um, yeah, feel free to contact us、uh, directly or、uh, speak to Yang. He and、um, he can、uh, he can help.、Uh, I can do translation. <laughs>、uh, translation or just general inquiry. We can. You know, we're happy to look at people's businesses and see if they are fit for us. Yeah. Uh, OK， 那么大家有什么问题的话，如果大家英文好，可以直接呃跟 Elevate Brands 来去联系。那么同时呢，如果要大家有什么其他的一些问题的话，那么汇网一直在这个地方。非常感谢大家关注今天我们的这一次的直播。那也希望大家的销售能够更好。那我们现在先这样。Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Rob. And I hope you have a good evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Bye bye.